Hi, I am Jennifer Giron, a postdoctoral researcher at the Smith Lab of Insect Biodiversity at Purdue University. Today, I will talk to you about the Coleoptera Anatomy Ontology Project, which is the focus of my work there. I would like to start by bringing up this quote from a recent correspondence piece in Nature, Ecology and Evolution by Orr and collaborators, where they describe ways in which taxonomic work should be moving with technological advances, just as molecular work has been doing. One of the ways we can think of bringing up taxonomy up to speed with technological advance is by incorporating what is known as the biodiversity knowledge graph, which portrays the several pieces of information that are interconnected throughout the research that we do. One of the links is of course, us as researchers, and you might have noticed that nowadays journals request that you provide them with your ORCID so that it can link you to the DOI of your paper. If you are describing new taxa, those should be registered at Zoo Bank. If you provide molecular information, that should be, should be registered at the NCBI. And some journals would strongly encourage you to submit your specimen data as a Darwin Core file that can be submitted to GBIS. Furthermore, those specimens in GBIS can be linked back to you as a, as a collector, a determiner, or both in the Bionomia portal. There are efforts nowadays to go back and extract all this information from older literature, which is one of the things that Platzi has been spearheading. Following the principles of open science and fair data, making information findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, Platzi has created tools and workflows to liberate information from what they call PDF prison. These workflows extract information by using semantic annotations, marking distinct sections within a paper, like the nomenclature section, citations for references, specimens, and figures, and the description section. These kinds of workflows and tools streamline the process of extracting taxonomic treatments from published literature, unlocking the potential for this information to be reused and effectively cited in other studies. Going back to our biodiversity knowledge graph, we can argue that one of the weakest links, at least for entomology and perhaps for most invertebrates is our ability to process information about traits and more specifically, phenotypic traits. So here is where the Coleopter Anatomy Ontology project comes into play. The main goal of the project is of course to produce the anatomy ontology for beetles, but what is an ontology and how is it going to help fixing this weak link? Put simply, an ontology is a formal way of organizing information. When we say formal in this context, it means that information is organized in a, and presented in such a way that it can be understood by humans, but also processable by machines. For example, when we think of the anatomy of a beetle, one of the ways to organize what we know about it is to think of the main divisions of the body or tagmas. Each of those tagmas is subdivided in different sections, which can be subdivided further and further. We also need to consider the presence of sclerites, membranes, and CT, for example, and keep in mind the relative position of each structure. As you can imagine, we would struggle to get all these terms, their relationships, and the overlapping hierarchies involved in a simple database. That is why we are using an ontological approach to represent our knowledge of beetle anatomy. Using this system and because of how the relationships and hierarchies are set up, if we are talking about a beetle tibia, for example, a computer would be able to make assertions about it just based on its logically associated and hierarchically inherited properties. In order to produce this ontology, we are compiling, organizing, and annotating information about beetle anatomy which we are then integrating into the framework of the ontology for the anatomy of the insect skeletomuscular system, or AISM. By using the ontology development key, 
which is basically a package of software that automates several tasks, preventing errors and making your data cleaner and fully interoperable with other ontologies. Part of the annotation process involves taking our natural language definitions and using semantic annotations by defining terms and relationships. Here, for example, we have a maxilla, which according to Snodgrass is defined as the second pair of appendages of the nasal region of the head. Using semantic annotations, we can indicate that the word appendage is a structure, the word paired refers to a feature of that structure, the term nasal region refers to a relative location, and the term of the head is indicating a relationship is indicating how this particular structure is related to the rest of the body. Most of this annotation process takes place, place in a program called Protege, and the ontology development kit is set up to allow for collaborative editing using GitHub. It is important to note that each term in the ontology gets a unique identifier, which once the ontology has been accepted and processed by the Oboe Foundry, it can be searched using platforms like BioPortal. Here you can see an example of the Hymenoptera anatomy ontology, where you can visualize the main hierarchy on the panel on the left and the term, its definition and annotations here on the right. So if you only want to explore available ontologies, you don't really need specialized software. You can just go online and look at it directly. BioPortal also offers some visualization tools that allow to explore the relationships among your terms. One thing that would, we would like to emphasize in the Beetle ontology is the sensu and usage of each term, which are treated as additional annotations. As we know, some terms in coleoptera anatomy can have multiple meanings depending on the group, or a single structure can have multiple terms to refer to it in different taxa. For example, the frontocleptial and midcranial sutures for Lorenz and collaborators in 2011 correspond to the epicranial and antenofrontal sutures of Richmond in 1931, or to the epicranial stem and epicranial arms of Stigny in 1923. So with well annotated and well referenced terms, we would be able to reconcile and analyze morphological terminology through time. For this particular task, and especially because of the implications of this standardization for homology assessment, we will include community feedback into the project at some point. One of the goals of the ontology is to be able to communicate with other fields of knowledge, like for example, the gene ontology, which would allow for more precise mapping of genotype to phenotype, for example. The way that anatomy ontologies have been incorporated into publications so far is by the use of tables, including the term, its definition, and the unique, yeah, unique identifier of each of these, the terms that you use. Typically, it has been done for morphological and taxonomic papers, but the idea is to extend these applications, the application of, of anatomy ontologies to data mining so that we can extract phenotypic information from the literature and incorporate it into character coding schemes. We can also produce semantically enhanced descriptions at a certain level of automation, and there are already available some tools for this. Um, we can also generate partitioning schemes for phylogenetic analysis, which we have already seen in some papers. And we can also start using technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and computer vision to take a look at the beetle, to take a look at beetle morphology in a new light. All of this to contribute to make this straight link of the biodiversity knowledge graph stronger over time. We are also looking into options to create a data portal to display an illustrated and referenced glossary for the beetle anatomy ontology. But for now, we have just a draft web website for it. So feel free to go see it. 
I would like to thank all our collaborators for their feedback, all the discussions and all the encouragement. And um, we will keep you posted at the time that we are ready to engage with a larger community of coleopterists. In the meantime, if you have any questions or are interested in contributing at this early stage of the project, just send me an email. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>